What's going on guys? Time for another update video on just kind of what's going on here. It is a mess today. I'm going to try to clean up some. Uh, but I figured I'd show you what we are doing. We got our hands in a ton of different baskets and it's kind of neat. I'm going to teach you a little bit about uh, making some money potentially on this video. So if you, you, you know, this will be a little bit more in an update video. But, so what do we got going on? Um, I just want to show you some kind of cool things. It's been a long time. If you've been following a lot of my old videos, you've seen this printer before. Um, this is a printer just for all the new people that I got a long time ago. It's a Mingda Glitar C6. What a weird looking printer. It's a 200 by 300 by 580 deep. Uh, came with a proprietary hot end that I swapped out to a dual BMG with a Volcano. And uh, honestly, I've been printing with it for a little bit. <laughs> if you notice, that hot end's a little janky. Yeah, I'm not the most professional setup on that, but I had the stock hot end for a bit, and the cable chain setup had jacked jacked up the hot end cabling so I ran a whole new cabling through it and didn't do it in the cabling like I should have but I just wanted to get the thing running again this was a while back uh, hadn't used it pretty much since I got in here I think I used it one time since I got in here but it kept on jamming and it was annoying me um, but what I did is I, I started printing with it and I noticed it was starting to jam but if I pushed down on the filament it would easily come out like really easily and I'm like oh yeah it's got the volcano on it that volcano's meant to push filament so if you if you put a volcano on a, on a printer um, at least in my experience on this one you can't run it slow um, or at least this printer doesn't like running slow and that's that's what I've kind of come to the conclusion on is it likes running fast so I mean you can see it's 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 not running too bad right now I think it has an outer wall speed that's a little slow but I have the print speed at like a hundred no, I think it was on 80 is what I set it at on Cura, and I'm 165 plus on my screen, just kind of stress testing it, seeing how fast I can get it. But it's printing very fast now. So I have the same exact file on this one. It's running at, I think, 80 on this printer, um, and this is the 10 log D2, and it's got a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It's actually creating a really clean print. This one's a little bit dirtier, but it's doing this one in about an hour and a half. It's doing that one in four hours. So the production time is kind of cool being able to get that out, but the finish is not as a uh, mint. You, you know, I would put this at a 90% finish or a 90, maybe, you know, some people in 95, 96% finish, but it's not perfect. And, and this one, you, you know, I would put just below perfect at like a 99. I mean, the finish on those is nice and maybe I'll show you that here in a little bit. Uh, I still have a bunch of these rings to do. I'm actually a little bit behind because I've been doing other prints when I should be dedicating my whole fleet to uh, that right there. So we'll just ignore that I didn't get uh, that done as fast as possible. Um, we have this thing, ignore that. Um, I won't talk about it. Um, what was it? These are a bunch of old prints that I had printed kind of for fun, experimented with, you know, what would be good with succulent pots and stuff like that. So um, yeah, a lot of rolls of filament put into this. This was actually the very first thing I ever created on Thingiverse. So I've had this print for a very long time, it's dropped, it, um, I think the filament had jammed and I had kind of half-assed recovered it um, twicey, but it took too long to print this thing on the original setting, so I didn't commit to making more of these, but I put the little flower life, this is all just Tinkercad, I hollowed out the inside, it was kind of cool. Um, just a bunch of other kind of like pots and bases and things that uh, I'm going to try to sell this weekend. So this weekend we're doing Arts Goggle, which will be on Main Street, I've got a, a, a poster right here. See if it'll show up. Yeah, so music on Magnolia. Um, you know, there's all the different stages, and then here's where it's gonna be in Fort Worth. Um, so yeah, if you're in the DFW area, definitely check us out this weekend. It should be cool. Over 750 vendors, um, 30 different bands. So that's what we're preparing all these neat things for. So I'm just trying to print kind of cool stuff that um, that'll print fast. Um, not use a lot of filament so we can get a lot out of it and then to sell at, uh, at a little booth. Um, so doing booths is a great way, in my opinion, to get started. So here's the segue into how to make some money. We just did the Fort Worth Arts Fest. That was kind of a, uh, uh, an unusual one in that it was four days. Um, and it was actually a high-end one. So normally I wouldn't do such a booth like that one. I think the cost was over $1,500 for a booth, but we, we got in real lucky with the Tarrant County College, and because we're the makerspace, well, because I'm inside the makerspace and I support the makerspace, and 3D printing is kind of a maker thing, um, 
Yeah, and I only say kind of because, like, yeah, you know, we make the files, we do the things, but if you're just pulling from Thingiverse and printing, I think the, the, the maker side of it is just a little bit lower, but you're still a maker, hands down, because you are making things with a machine, um, just like anyone else with a laser or a CNC, but the machine is definitely making it a lot more simple um, in certain cases. But the, the slicer settings on getting mint prints, that's where I think the maker tuning, um, you know, you really come in. When you can get just mint prints from everything, really, really good prints, um, then you'll like it. But yeah, so check out some of these other things. We got a little Pikachu. We got a Pikachu pot. We got a couple of uh, unicorn deals for little doggies or girls. Those are like so small. Maybe a little stretch. Um, not sure what this is, but that looks kind of cool. Uh, we got a new laser engraver. If you didn't notice this or see the other videos on it. Um, here's a 20 watt laser. Or no, 30 watt laser. Um, so not too bad. It'll engrave an image like this in about 30 seconds. Um, so really nice. Um, I haven't had any engraving it does over like a minute or two. Now it only does 175 millimeters, so about seven inches, but it does those seven inches very quickly. And you can see some of the tuning that I was doing there. And it'll, it'll get a little deep, you know, it's not gonna cut through thick wood, but, um, but it'll do good. And then get this, okay, I gotta show you a couple of these. What does this look like? Write in the comments before I tell you. Pause it right in the comments. It is, <laughs> looks like a cloud, at least to me. And here is your cloud storage. So if you want some physical cloud storage, you want to store your keys to your car in the cloud, um, <laughs> you can do that. So it's like a little storm cloud. Um, but yeah, super, super neat little deal there. We got a bunch of little rock succulent potheads. Uh, we're gonna make rockulants. <laughs> Roculent. It's so silly. Um, yeah, so here is a good example of these masks. So this is off of the Glitar C6. I think the roughness even looks pretty decent on here. And then this is off that tin log. Same exact file, about the same settings. But you can see the cleanness is just a bit more there. And that's that's mostly on the steppers from what I understand. So the, the motherboard on that Minga is still original. Um, it's actually a two CPU motherboard. There are two CPUs on it and they tried to make it really good or, or you know there was an option to switch it over to 32-bit. That didn't seem to work too good when I did that so I've just left it alone. Um, printing a lot of these little Dutch Brothers. So Dutch Brothers has popped up in our area and is really good coffee. Competes with like Starbucks a little bit cheaper and uh, we made little fidget spinners out of their logo. Um, so we're gonna sell a handful of those. I took a uh, horny toad that I found, scanned it, uh, cleaned up the model some, and made this. So I haven't shared this file, I don't plan on it, because it's really close to the TCU horn frog. Um, there's nothing saying TCU on here, and the color is just a little bit darker than theirs. Um, so I should be able to keep away from, I just like how that shines like that, that's cool. Um, I should be able to not get in trouble with copyright, uh, but TCU people will love it, which will be right next to TCU, literally a mile or two away. So, uh, one roll of filament got me all of these little horny toes. They are a lightning infield two wall, and they print in like two hours. So if I can get like fifteen to twenty-five dollars, I'll be making over my uh, my going rate that I that I generally charge per hour. So that'll be good. This is where. You know, if you can sell a bunch of things in a condensed amount of time and you've got time and free machines to to uh, prepare for a show, then you're going to do pretty good. We've got Conan O'Brien up there and Selena Gomez. They were um, bad prints from, uh, from a previous project, bad prints. Like that one was too small, I think, and that one was too big. Um, that I printed for a guy, but it wasn't clean enough, so I, I went ahead and printed him a cleaner version. He just wanted that to hold his Oculus. Um, piece of artwork I've, I've shown in some of my older videos. We've got the uh, the big shark off of the belt printer. I almost sold this for $120, and I tell you what, at Arts Goggle, this thing is going to be a $300 or $400 print because I couldn't reprint this right now if I wanted to, um, and it's just too cool. It gets a shitload of attention. Um, and then check all these out. So we're going to put a little succulent pot succulents in uh, in these guys. Got a lot of those. Stuff like this will sell for like five bucks, takes 30 minutes to print. You know, you're at $10 a print hour, that's real good. Um, this looks real neat. This is that half and half filament. Gives you a really weird ribbony effect. Um, 
It's, you know, if it works perfectly, you're supposed to have half of your print one color, like this half was gold, this half is red, but it kind of it kind of rotated at one point and the filament spun around on the inside so you got a little bit neat of a, an effect there. Um, check out this hand. So this hand is an Apple Watch and there's a couple different ones. Um, so the thumb has a hole, you run your wire up to it, you put your deal, your charger in here and you just stick your Apple Watch on the hand and it uh, <laughs> it'll be your it'll be your uh, watch holder charger watch charger. Uh, got a big crystal here. I have I need to get some little LED lights, but like you know you have a little light going and the whole crystal lights up. You know I think that's kind of cool. I think people will dig that. Um, looks pretty good in person. Looks pretty neat in video too, actually. Um, yeah, so I gotta ask, is my screen big enough? <laughs> this is my generally my gaming rig. I've, I've shown this in a couple of recent videos. Uh, my laptop had broke, so I, uh, I had brought that up here. Actually, my laptop is fixed and back. They did a really good job uh, repairing it, replaced even a broken key that was on it when all I needed was a cooling fan. But uh, my laptop is running great. And I like it. See, I'm getting Dutch Bros over there. Um, yeah, this is super nice for modeling, for using a bunch of different things. I keep like 30 tabs open. I keep about 32 to 40 gigs of RAM constantly being used um, just with all the stuff I have pulled open. So it definitely, definitely pays if you're going to run this as a business or you're going to do uh, 3D modeling that you invest minimum, minimum. $2,000 to 4000 $4,500 on a good rig. Um, and you start calling them rigs, you start calling them, you know, gaming computers, workstations. Yeah, you know, workstation is generally above a gaming computer. You're going to have more specs. And those specs are going to be geared towards processing information. Oh, man. Look at this. I just spotted it as I'm watching the video. I'll be damned. There's a jam in this... And this filament, this is a very long print, and now I'm missing the top half of it. I'm going to have to stop this. I'll figure out what happened. Probably a... I don't know what happened. Uh, but we'll figure that out. So that's the life of 3D printing every day, is having to <laughs> come in and stop prints. And, you know, this morning, as soon as I got in, I just go and try to start prints. Um, so I'm going to do that while we... Uh, let's see. Print... USB, and a strong tie, and print. So, I think I'll get, start warming up. Um, yeah, still got to make a bunch of those. Got that big filament up there. Big printer needs big filament. So, we're using the 5kg rolls on it now. Um, but, yeah. So, going to shows. Ideally, I think you should, if you're going to start off and you don't know what you're doing. Um, I'll show you I'm back here. Um, you want to probably be in the, like, 20 50 100 150 $250 price tag for a vendor booth. You, you know, if you don't know how you're going to do, if you don't know what you're selling, if you're trying something random, um, you know, don't go gangbusters and, and do a 1000 to $1,500 to $5,000 booth. Some booths are $5,000. Um, it all depends on your clients and what you're going for. And doing stuff like that. So definitely, definitely um, don't go crazy on your first booth. You know, try to diversify and try to do different unique stuff. And it'll be um, it'll be good for you. You know, look at the random things we're doing. Uh, you, you know, we sold a bunch of rock buses. Now, definitely, let me make this clear in the disclaimer. Uh, you know, you don't want to be selling things on Thingiverse that you're not supposed to and I guarantee you some of what I have here is that um, you know I didn't print all of these I've, I've got like three other people that we're kind of sharing this booth with and some of the people from the makerspace are using these printers to print some of these things but you're not most likely going to get caught at a booth when you're selling to an individual or anything like that you know it's it's when you put these things online and you market a octopus on your Etsy page that you'll get it booted or something else like that so I would say you can fear less about doing in-person booths and selling to individuals. Just be aware of that. Definitely anything Disney. Don't post any of the stuff 
that isn't like custom made and you own the files and you know for sure that that it's not copyrighted on anything online if you're doing the booths yeah you know you might have some gray area there but be careful if you make booths your thing and you're going to you know a booth every weekend or 15 to 20 a year and you're known for being the octopus person and you you base your booths and and everything off of nothing but copyrighted stuff you will get caught so you know it's one thing to sprinkle it in and have some fun because you know all the kids are seeing the octopus on TikTok and they're willing to pay 20 25 dollars or their moms are to have them shut up about wanting the octopus don't abuse it is all i'm saying so so keep keep aware of that stuff um what else yeah definitely diversify try to get unique things that you can do try to think local yeah you know your local um Sports teams are always going to be good things that you can sprinkle a couple prints in from, from those things like the Horn Frogs and whatnot. You know, think about your local businesses. Think about the area that you're in. It's going to be totally different if you're watching this from the from the rural county of you, you know some some place in Kentucky versus you, you know downtown Atlanta, downtown Detroit, DFW Fort Worth. You know, Texas. I can leverage anything in Texas. I can do Texas stars. I can do boots. I can do you know a bunch of different things related to texas so, so you know if you've got no idea lean on something that's common ask other friends especially women if you're a bunch of guys watching this and you've got a wife a girlfriend a good friend just someone you know that has style or that keeps up with the trends ask them what should i print what do you think people would buy you know i didn't know what a squishmallow was and all these kids are buying squishmallows and i laser engrave uh, a little drawing of a squishmallow on a on a uh, on a you know, 10 cent piece of wood and we sold them for a dollar. I was making 90 cents off of a 20 second uh, laser engraving. Yeah, you know, so that's awesome. Now a cheap laser engraver won't do that in 30 seconds. It might take five minutes, but that's the, you, you know, that's where the value of a $7,000 laser engraver comes in is I can now make a dollar in 30 seconds. And if I can do that, you, you, you know, over and over and over again, I'm making 30 to $60 an hour, um, which is pretty nice. Um, not too bad at least you know it's something to get your name out there more is hey that's that person that if I want to place an order for 30 to 60 coasters for a wedding or for a birthday party which I've already had two of those orders um, that you can fulfill it and make eighty dollars in you know half hour hour um, and it's jobs like that that will keep you busy um, now that you've been staring at this thing for a second let me talk about it just for a little bit this is one of our um, latest uh, creations this is a prototype it's not super clean but it shines all right um, printed four different sections, bonded them together very sloppily in a hurry. Um, it's going to be much cleaner than that in the future, if not in one single piece. I'm going to even attempt resin printing this in a clear resin. That should come out really sweet. We got some Infinity Kappas here. These look really awesome. They kind of fit that kind of copper vibe that we have. We have a little bit of copper. It's more all the copper is actually in the bathroom. Um, but it should fit the vibe of the, of the makerspace. This is for the makerspace, so we're going to fly it from the four corners here uh, uh, up. I'm slightly concerned that this is going to be all of my support to hold this thing. This thing's quite heavy, probably weighing in about 20, 25 pounds or so. I might take just a little bit of resin and kind of like coat over like this to give it just a little bit more support. That might be something I do. Or, you know, if I use a two washers on either side and I kind of clamp down a little bit it'll at least be grabbing you know more than just the weight of up here so I want to I want to really you know press the weight all the way across there so we're definitely going to use some washers um, but that should keep it nice and sturdy that's going to go dead center of the room there so you got one speaker there one speaker kind of flying up in the corner there and two on that side I wanted a little bit more punch out of these six by nines so the front of it has a four inch the back of it is a six by nine hitting the wall I'm like I need just a little bit more thump from those six by nines so let's put a quad box up top there a sealed box would give more of that thump so uh, that's what we're going for here the uh, current ones that are up there have ports so they're giving a little bit more deeper base a little bit more low end base um, but they're still six by nines you know they're not going to produce subwoofer level base um, so this thing is the Sonofinity Pack 20 and I think I've talked about it in one of my more recent videos but uh, my side gig that I started up about two months ago is working with a guy who builds um, custom large subwoofer boxes so looking at this you know this is bigger than obviously the smallest subwoofer box you've ever seen um, but this will be his smallest subwoofer box you've ever seen and there's only two drivers here so you see all those holes there's only two subwoofers going in this box okay so you're gonna have two eights 
two eights, and the, the, the back of the drivers of the eights will literally almost be touching right here. Um, we did need a little bit of an air gap, but we planned for that. And then what's going in here are passive radiators. So a passive radiator, essentially, each one of these is going, is like the equivalent math and effect of having, if I remember right, like an 18 foot or a 40 foot um, like base reflex port, or, or I could be using the term wrong, but it's like an, it's like a big 18 foot port. Let's just lowball it. I remember it being a lot. So you, 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 you know, and even getting that to work, if you had hooked it up in a port like that, it wouldn't be the same as doing it like this because there's more orders to this box that, that allow you to, to leverage it even further. So each one of these acts like that port. So it gets you that really deep, low end base note, right? So, so I'll explain the full thing. So, so when, you, when you do this, you have your two eights, right? They're firing into a chamber here. This will be closed off. And that will be hitting the passive radiators, right? And, and the air from that passive radiator and the sound resonance will start making those shake. What those will create a base that's at the deeper, lower end frequency. So let's just say we are running 5,000 watts to this single eight right here, right? And these weren't here. Well, that, that wattage might push it all the way past where it can go. You know, maybe with, with just open ports, it can only go, you know, say, you know, four inches or so like that. Well, if we do the same amount of power with passive radiators here, the passive radiators, when they're bouncing back, they're pushing that air back into the sub. So now the sub, as it's coming this way, is having air pushed at it that way. And you're able to put more power to make it push that harder, which will make these push harder, which will make air push harder here. So you get this compounding effect of the more you push at this, the harder it pushes back, the harder you can push at it, the harder it pushes back. Kind of like a turbo effect for subwoofers. Um, that's kind of the silliest way I've heard it explained. Um, but that's the effect you wind up getting. And then on this side, you get a big, long transmission line that'll pass over top of this, which is flipped upside down and like this. Um, and then that, comes around through the inside here and um, then you have all four of these so this is an opening in the front so this will actually stay open so all four of these passive radiators are firing at each other and then the back side of the subwoofer where it's getting noise is going to be coming up over and then down into here so these will be creating pressure in here pushing back up on the subwoofer on that side, uh, on this side. So because you have so much pressure being put on these on these actual drivers, you can put more and more and more power to them. So this is how you wind up needing the most powerful and effective subwoofers out there because you're you're not reaching their excursion. You're actually working them so hard they overheat and melt down. Um, so most people when they pop subs, you know they play a low note, they play it too hard. And their subs over excursion and they start beating on either end of the coil messing up the coil or anything else like that our systems will literally melt the coils and fuse them because we're pushing too much power through them because of the way he figured out how to do this um, and i'm not even going to talk about how special this video is but i'm not sharing this anywhere else but this page because the majority of y'all aren't audiophiles and i hope none of you wind up yoinking this design from us um, but we do plan on patenting it actually it's under patent pending um, right now, as soon as this is finished, we'll, we'll finalize the patent. But there's multiple boxes here. Like I said, this is the smallest. The biggest one is this times four, and instead of <laughs> eights, it uses 15s and 18s. Um, and that's the one that you can literally use for a concert. But what's so awesome about this right here is this should have replaced like two or four dual 18 boxes. And you can fly it, you can run it underneath a desk. You can, uh, you know, do a lot of unique things with the placement due to how small it is. Now, it does need to be like this. You couldn't run it on its side. Uh, it does need to be flat for the gravity effect on the passive radiators. But um, this will be a really sweet thing. And, and that's, you know, I joined this company to help him out because, you know, the, the guy is a bit, the owner is a bit more of a designer, a little bit more of an introvert. And, you know, I'm like hey, let's just go out and meet some DJs and club owners and bring one of our systems and see if they like it. And if they like it, we'll sell it to them. You know? And he, he didn't really have that mentality initially. Um, but I've been able to, to kind of sway him around a little bit. And we're actually about to get some numbers on this. So we, we've got a hookup on buying the software and the microphones. I mean, literally several thousand dollars just to measure it and say, okay, this is what this thing uh, puts out and this is what it compares to. Um, so we'll be doing that coming very soon and that will be really impressive hopefully we're going to have this thing ready by the weekend and we're going to take this and that with all of our crap 
to the uh, Arts Goggle booth and <laughs> sit there and play them together. We we'll probably won't turn that up all the way because we'll just disturb everyone. But, uh, you know, if someone's just like, man, that sounds really good, and we're like, oh, just wait, and we turn it up for them, give them a nice experience for 10 to 30 seconds, and then turn it back down. That's kind of the goal, you know. Maybe we'll find someone there that's just like, who in the heck brings this type of artwork? But it is. I mean, this is artwork. This thing looks cool. No one has a quad box like this designed for the center of a room. Um, and I even like this because the 619s kind of point down a little bit, so they'll be pointing down into the room. The, the little tweeters in the center there um, really worked out nice on that. I like it. And then, uh, yeah, this thing, this thing's going to be great. We're going to fly it in the end, dead center here. So this is where we have our amps, a little ghetto done, but we're going to clean that up. We're going to fly it off this big I-beam. Um, so we'll have really, really good bass. In the, in the current moment, I have a reference subwoofer, which you can barely, barely see. But there's a box up in this corner. Now you can kind of see it. Um, that has two 12s in it. And I used to have that in my car one of my cars. I, I bought a car, it came with two 15s, the box was ginormous, wouldn't fit in the trunk of a regular car, so I traded it in some cash. I got cash on my end for two 12s, and it's just been sitting in my closet for forever, but I was like, you know what, we can do this as a good reference sub of this is what normal bass sounds like, and then this is what our bass sounds like. So, you know, this thing can't hit anything below like 30. It sounds so dumb, it's so boomy, it hits like 40 to 80 fine, but this thing will hit down to like 10 and 20 at like max power and it's going to sound so freaking cool um literally experiencing this type of a subwoofer this type of bass that can give you maximum power at a very low hertz um you know if you look at all the big boxes it's like down all the way down to 40 all the way down to 30 all the way down to you know 37 32 you know 28 it's like and it's like yeah if it hits 28 it's like you know the power level is like up here 40 80 you know 30 20 it's like it's like sure it hits 20 but it's like almost out of its power range so you can barely hear the 20 note we're here that power range we lope it off at like 80 so so it's not even making bass at 80 and like it just goes up so that we make those lowest notes be the loudest notes it plays so, so when this thing's hitting 20 it's giving all the juice and it's you know it sounds freaking cool um it changes everything. I'm telling you, if you ever experience a Sound Affinity large box this size or bigger, you will rethink bass. You will rethink all songs. You will rethink how you experience songs. It will ruin going to clubs, going to concerts, because they don't have anything like this. It's like literally like being blessed. You know, it's, I don't know how to put it other than like taking the bite of you know, the apple for, for Christians. You, you, you know, that moment when they got all the knowledge... It's that eye-opening of a moment when you experience a subwoofer like this. If you like sound, if you like bass, if you've been building boxes for your car and you've got something you spent $500 to $2,000 at your house or higher on a sound system, you will do anything to get one of these. I know it. it everyone that hears it is just sold immediately. Everyone that experiences it. No, people that know nothing about bass understand and know that something's different about this one but people that have heard multiple bases and know what a base reflex is know what know what a crossover is know how to own boxes you know know what different orders of a box are. i didn't even know there was different orders of a box and this happens to be a seventh order box if you do research on a seventh order box that's a very rare very mathematical specific very unique kind of like a box that is a unicorn or a magic made box and he didn't intend to make a seventh order box he just built it and wound up with a design and then when he counted the orders it turned out to be a seventh order box and this thing doesn't cancel anywhere because that's the problem with those seventh order boxes if you don't have all the math and everything perfect you'll be hitting you know 80 hertz 30 hertz you know 80 hertz 70 60 and then at like the 40 hertz note it just cancels out and you don't hear anything so it'll be like uh, you know you don't want to hear that you don't want to hear a bass note just get deleted because your box sucks that doesn't happen here. And because of the way that it is working, it's literally kind of like that turbocharging effect where you can take much, much smaller drivers, drive much larger passive radiators, and make a box that's literally two eights sound better than a box that's two eighteens or four eighteens. And it's like, what? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, you know, if you're talking numbers and like, you know, you've got a four cylinder and I've got a, I've got a V12 and the four cylinder somehow beats you, this is, the box that does it and then when we build this 
at the you know V10 size, it just craps on everything that ever thought it was competition in the first place. Like there is no box that compares to the larger ones of these. And I don't know how much more to sell this thing. I'm not trying to. It's just it's had that much of an impact on my life just hearing what something like this can do. And I it's it blew me away. So if you're an audiophile, hit me up. Um, Email is 3D prints with an S everything at gmail.com. 3D prints everything at gmail.com. I have um, what the Facebook page. If I haven't mentioned that and you're still here, if you want to make some money with your 3D printer and this is one of your first videos to watch, I run 3D print everything, my business name, 3D print everything for profit. Check that out. Answer all the questions. Mention that you came here from YouTube, but give long answers. I don't I don't accept anyone that just gives a one answer. If you just say YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. I'm not going to let you in. you got to say that, hey, I saw your videos on YouTube. I like it. Talk to me about why you've come there. You need to at least have a printer and know how to use it. This is not a group for somebody who just bought their first printer and is having problems and you want to ask questions about problems. Um, find a group specific to your printer for that. My group is to help you make money um, once you understand how to use it. So it's, a, it's an advanced level group, but we've got a lot of members. We've got a lot of businesses. Um, people do come there and it's a friendly environment to show off your work, to show off cool things you've printed, to show off money you've made and to uh, get help when you need it. And any assholes, definitely flag them, report them and I'll remove them from the group. No asshole policy. Um, what else? Um, yes, so that, I have an Instagram, I got a TikTok, you can follow those. I don't update them as much as I should. One day I will. Um, but I just wanted to give a nice long update video on what we kind of got going on. Um, this is from a modeler that I just met and uh, he was in the riots in Venezuela and has since moved here to the US but this was one of his models of uh, one of the one of the riot people with essentially a really shitty broken shield and these things were wood and any shot any beanbag any anything would just tear this up but the writing on it says target here MFers with a big target and they were trying to get hit over having the women and children get hit so he's protecting the women and children throwing what looks like some type of improvised you know firework or grenade or something uh, you know they didn't have military weapons it was the citizens against the government but um really impactful moment there um, so he's really cool he's working with me a little bit now uh, but yeah yeah um, thanks for hanging out with me listening to me I know this is a long video um, but I hope that it's entertaining or informative. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. I do my best to try to read them and get to them, but I don't always respond to all of them. Uh, I kind of get on stints of like, you, you know, I'm, my focus is split like this, and like sometimes I'll hyper focus on certain things and just put all the focus this way instead of on the 30 different things I'm involved with. I'm literally also trying to help start a coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> but I got a unique opportunity. I'm just bringing everyone else to essentially run it. And through me having the unique opportunity, I'm trying to just get a small, small piece of it. Um, but it'll be such a successful coffee shop that even a small piece could really help propel what I'm doing here at 3D Print Everything. You know, hopefully it can give me some extra money to get some more machines, a bigger space. I don't have enough space. I mean, look at this. Every friggin' space is full. You know, we need to duck. Like, essentially what we need to do is get a new location for the maker space and I need to take over all of this or I need to move to a bigger location even in general I could probably use a location twice this size and uh, I would feel a lot more comfortable than I do now um, it's not bad but it's stuffed I mean this is ridiculous like how many effing screens do I need there's two computers here and generally a laptop over there um, you know I need to have like a workbench we don't have that anyways um, we're always looking for <laughs> help and advice in those areas um, and I still need someone to do my taxes if anybody on here is a tax person and you could help me out for a reasonable rate CPA or you know finance person just someone that does the taxes and or looks at my stuff monthly and tells me what I can and can't spend I need one of those let me know please hit me up in the email <laughs> phone number is 817-723-0443 give me a call um, thank you people I, I love and I appreciate all the, the support and shares and likes. And, um, you, you know, you commenting and telling me and calling me and emailing me that you enjoy these videos makes me want to produce them more. So definitely, you know, encourage me to make more videos and I'll make more videos for you. Tell me what you want to make videos on. If you have a specific video you need, 
um, I will, uh, I'll make that for you. Um, and I'm sorry I wander while I talk, and I hope that the super stable makes this less nauseating. I know some people have complained in the past about how shaky the film was. Um, so let me know. Comment on everything. Tell me how I can improve, and I'll do better so that y'all can do better. Thanks, guys.